do we believe that if even 10% of these 4,000 detainees came from homes in Upper St. Andrew, that we would still have a state of emergency running today? The Internal and External Affairs Committee of Parliament received a very disturbing report from the Office of the Public Defender. The statistics quoted, for example, show that in St. James, of the approximately 4,000 persons detained, most of them young men, teenagers, or in their early 20s, only 2% were charged for serious crimes. The conditions under which the detainees have been held in cages and in cells were described as inhuman, degrading, and disgraceful by the public defender. Up to November the 16, 2018, the JCF record shows that 4,084 persons had been detained under SOPE. On average, it took about three to seven days or longer to process persons. As at October the 9th, there were 26 detainees locked up at Freeport who cumulatively spent 7.4 years since January 2018 in custody. And even after this inordinate length of time, there is yet to be a determination of their fate. It has been reported to our office repeatedly that detainees have lost jobs, they have lost opportunities, and actually there is no shortage of evidence in our office on that matter. By your data, any of those were charged? No. No, they had not been charged. So on average, they've each been detained for over 100 days? Because you're saying 26 detainees have spent 2,708. So if you just do a straight yeah. division of the 2,708 by the 26, on average, some might be more than 100, some, but on average, those 26 would have been detained for over 100 days, well over three months, yes. without in, in being charged yes, at all. And these were not persons who were previously um, had warrants outstanding or no. anything like that. We have spoken repeatedly about the harsh conditions that detainees have had to endure. They are not persons who are ordinarily wanted by the police. As you can see, the statistics show that the vast majority of them are taken up, their lives disrupted, processed and released and they are taken in, whether into the cage or into a cell, not even cardboard or newspaper provided for them to sleep. There is overcrowding, the conditions are appallingly deplorable and shameful. They, I had said children, that was on seven under 15, the age 15 to 17 is still a child in our law, and we had 98 of those. So at least 105 children yes. were detained in St. James under the state of emergency. From January, January 18th to October 31. When we take these thousands of young people and dehumanize them, for an average of between four to as much as over a hundred days under these disgraceful conditions. Are we putting them back on the road in a way that has left them angry, angry and, and hostile now to the state itself and certainly to the security forces? The uncertainty as to the operational command and you know, you cite an, a particular example where a truckload of male detainees was transported to St. Andrew. And the whole day they are in the back of this truck. And eventually, because nobody had expected them, 
they ended up returning to Montego Bay without even disembarking the truck for the entire day. And, you know, they had no facilities to go to the toilet, etc. Um, no food, no water. This suggests to me, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, well, it is an indictment on the, on the command, quite frankly, of the security forces because contrary to what we've been understanding of how carefully planned and all the, um, the, the preparations and the logistics, this demonstrates a sort of confusion and, and the, the unfortunate part about it is that the persons who are paying the consequences of this are these same young men who have not been charged with anything and who 98% chance will never be charged with anything under this state of emergency. But they are treated in this cruel and dehumanizing way. Any of those are in breach of the Charter of Rights itself? Without a doubt, Chairman, without a doubt. Okay. I mean, could it be right, Chairman, Jamaica, for us to take persons in custody and serve them black tea, sugar and water with dry bread for breakfast? I mean, I, forgive me, I don't know how that is possible. There is an argument that as a society, we must be prepared to trade our values for our security. As a member of parliament, I reject the validity of this trade-off. Crime control efforts must be disciplined by the rule of law, due process, and respect for human rights and dignity.